Hello everyone, welcome to N-Step here on the final day of Pro Tour Armanquet. Well, the pyramid has been ascended. As always, just one gets to the very pinnacle, and this time it is Jerry Thompson of USA and Team Mutiny. Congratulations to our champion. Rich hanging alongside Maria Bartholdi and Ian Duke from Inside R&D. Um, Maria, your reaction, a terrific weekend. Oh, just fantastic. I love the Pro Tour, Rich. There was so much great magic that we got to see, so much innovation in standard as well. And of course, you know, I love watching draft and we had some really interesting things happen. We had a deck with six slither blades. We had a deck with a, a, an 11 four Enigma Drake. Mm. These sorts of things really feed my soul. Yeah, and then there's cards like Approach of the Second Sunny, and we <laughs> saw things with that going on. You must be very happy, both with Limited and indeed the current shape of standard. Yeah, it's been a great tournament. Um, yeah, like you said, really enjoyed watching the Limited rounds. Those went fantastic, saw a lot of cool stuff happening there. And then standard, it was just super exciting for me, as always, you know, to see a new large set come out, to see the impact that has on the environment. Also, you know, in the wake of the Felidar Guardian banning, to see what standard looks like as mm -hmm. you kind of lift off that top layer and see what was waiting there underneath. And yeah, really cool decks emerging. Was super happy to see the Zombies deck do really well this weekend. Love that that's bridging together themes from both Amonkhet and Innistrad. So yeah, a lot to be happy about this weekend from my perspective. For sure. Well, why don't we kick things off with our card of the tournament? So, uh, Ian, you, you get to uh, pick something out from, well, let's face it, a pretty wide selection. Are you going to go for a little zombie, maybe? Or, you know, maybe a torrential gear hulk? What are you going with? I'm actually going with Liliana's Mastery as the card of the weekend. And okay. while we didn't see this card show up just now in the finals, it did do awesome, awesome work throughout all the top eight, particularly uh, one of our semifinals matchups. Uh, between mono black zombies and black green where it just really helped the zombies deck dominate the board and just have the biggest creatures there um, all throughout the weekend you know i saw this card doing awesome work in the swiss it just creates a ton of board presence all by itself it serves as an anthem for your other zombies even if they sweep you after you play this it still stays in play to pump up your uh, future zombies um, if they sweep you before you play this, you play this afterwards and just add a ton of power to the board. So it's just a really flexible and powerful card that's good at almost any point in the game once you can cast it. Yeah, all of that seems like a really compelling reason for Liliana's Mastery to be our card of the weekend. Well, to your intense non-surprise, the player of the tournament, well, that's the champion. So that means that Jerry Thompson is behind us in the company of Brian David Marshall. Thanks, Rich. I'm here with... Say it with me, Pro Tour Champion Jerry Thompson. That sounds weird. <laughs> it sounds weird. Uh, it, it sounds pretty great uh, to someone who's had the chance to watch you for a long time playing. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the, the long road here. Where, where did all of this start? Where did your magic career begin? Uh, at, at a place called Burger Time, I guess. <laughs> I, I worked with a buddy of mine, and we were trying to find common interest, you know, and we went back and forth on things. He's like, I play Magic. And I was like, oh, I have some of those cards. I don't know how to play. And then he got me into the game, took me to some tournaments, and just, I got hooked. And, and then, you know, when you say went to some tournaments, that's like, when does that real drive to get to the next stage, to, to keep pushing yourself towards the next competitive tier uh, kick in for you? I don't know. It was just always there. Like, go to my first tournament, do a bunch of losing, obviously. <laughs> and it was like, oh, well, I think if I would have done this differently, then maybe I, I could have won, right? And it was always that. It was always just like, what can I do a little bit better? And every tournament for me has just been a learning experience. You know, and between now and then, countless frozen pizzas, notebooks full of scribbled deck oh, yeah. ideas, GPs, open weekends, PTQs. Uh, what what has this whole experience growth experience been like over that you know stretch of time like how has this game changed you uh it it's changed my entire life i mean i i do this for a living i write content for star city like i i go to these tournaments and play and this this is kind of it you know this is like the biggest deal in my life thus far uh, even even your girlfriend, someone you probably met through Magic. I know Isabel Hayes used to play Magic uh, all the time at Neutral Ground, a store yep. <laughs> that I was involved with a long time ago. Yep, absolutely. I traded her a couple draft sets before this tournament. She hasn't drafted yet. Maybe now she will. She hasn't played in a while, but yeah, it's it's a big deal. Now, uh, you know, we talked about those notebooks. That's one of the things I've always uh, admired about you when you're, you're, you're going into the Open Series and going week to week in, in, in these different tournaments. You'd always have things scribbled down. You'd always be making adjustments to the deck. A lot of people are going to be picking up this zombie deck. What, what, what are some adjustments people could be making moving forward with this? 
change the sideboard. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job with the main deck, and it's it's kind of just like my signature, right? It's like I moved kind of away from Fatal Push, more towards Grasp of Darkness, uh, and I think that helped me a lot because Fatal Push was not very good in the mirror match. And just little things like that that I think can give you a pretty big edge. But uh, our sideboard was not really missing a few cards, but like you're playing mono black, you don't have a lot of options, but like, you know, some Sky Sovereigns might have been nice. Uh, maybe some more transgresses, Lost Legacy's not very good, you know, that thing. So it's like, even as I'm going through the tournament, I'm thinking about what I could have done differently. Now, going back to that young Jerry Thompson who uh, first picked up those magic cards, if he fantasized about the idea of winning a Pro Tour, do you think he's thinking about doing it while slamming nine creatures sideways into the red zone for the final strike? Probably not. I was more of like a counterspell guy, <laughs> you know? So it's kind of weird, but whatever it takes. I uh, look great. I, I couldn't be happier for you, Jerry. Congratulations. Enjoy your title, Pro Tour Champion. Thanks so much, BDM. Well, Ian, another story of the weekend was Mardu Vehicles. Where were they? <laughs> yeah, story or non-story, as it were. <laughs> um, so coming to the tournament, I think a lot of players expected Mardu Vehicles to be the most played deck. It was actually the most played deck uh, on day one in the tournament here, representing almost a quarter of the field, but largely absent from day two. Um, Mardu Vehicles did not do well in this tournament, and I think, you know, in large part, that's due to players just preparing very well for it. But also, I think it didn't match up particularly well against the other top decks, which were uh, zombies, either mono black or black white, and then the various flavors of Etherworks Marvel decks as well. And um, so the question is, you know, what is that going to mean from here going forward? Is Mardu Vehicles just going to completely drop off the face of standard? I don't think so, honestly. I think it's still a really powerful deck, and it, it marks, you know, one of the extreme poles of the environment where it is the fastest aggro deck, and that's something everyone is always going to have to respe uh, respect. So, you know, I think going forward, maybe Mardu Vehicles isn't the best choice in this current metagame, but as things shift around and maybe people start targeting zombies or start targeting uh, Etherworks Marvel, Mardu could definitely rise up again. Thanks, Ian. Well, we've got Tim and Kenji waiting on the floor to give us our match of the weekend. Well, Kenji, it's just you and me here in the feature match area again. They've left us alone with this trophy that really should be in the hands of Jerry Thompson. And we've got to pick out what the match of the tournament was. We've seen a lot of great magic in this feature match area. What are your thoughts? Matt, overall, for matches, there were a few good ones that really stand out of mind. Of course, like Calcano making it into the top eight. The last one, of course, Jerry T versus Yuya, Yuya Watanabe. Great. Um, I don't know if I had a really standout match, though. I want to focus more on a game. I really like the game between uh, Martin Mueller and Calcano in the top eight. Uh, there was a specific game where, where Calcano had a ton of zombie, was getting a huge thing. He had used Lost Legacy to take care of not only Martin Mueller's two, uh, two Chandras, but all of the Ulamogs. And so Martin had to kind of navigate a way of just attacking with all of his servant of the conduits, eventually finding a sweltering suns off of his Etherworks Marvel instead of a huge Ulamog, uh, wiping all of Calcano's zombies, and then getting in there for the final points of damage off of Tyler's tracker. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that the, the final game score in that match didn't really reflect how back and forth it was. Definitely one of the games of the tournament. For me, when it comes to matches, I'm kind of with you that there were lots of individual games that were good, but for me, the match that was important was the final because of what it was kind of emblematic of. We got to see the upstart zombies against the Etherwork Marvel Menace. We got to see two great players. And to me, one of the stories of this tournament has been about rewarding players that have been working hard for a really, really long time. We saw Christian Calcano make his first top eight, and that one's been a long time coming. Jerry Thompson, his first top eight was Pro Tour Gatecrash a little while back, but he's one of those players that we've all known is a spectacular player for a very long time, and it was really just great to see him get rewarded. While the games themselves in the final, all of them felt kind of like a bit of a blowout, um, the actual last game of the tournament where we got to see an early Radiant Flames dealing with three creatures, I mean, that's exactly what Yuya Watanabe will have been hoping to achieve. And then Jerry Thompson's still just able to pile on the pressure and win it back. Uh, to me, the finals was, in fact, the match of the tournament. Thanks so much, Tim and Kenji. Well, we've had our card of the weekend. We've had our player of the weekend, our match of the weekend. That must, be, must mean it's time for team of the weekend. Brian David Marshall, take it away. 
Thanks, Maria. And, you know, there are a couple of different teams that I really considered for this. Uh, certainly lingering souls who came in needing a fourth place finish to keep their entire team qualified going into Kyoto. Uh, certainly MTG Mint Card in their tremendous story of getting Namsung Wook, Nam Wook qualified for the Pro Tour in Kyoto. But it was the team that was in the lead or tied for the lead coming into this Pro Tour team, Musashi, with this just killer lineup of Japanese all-stars uh, that was in first place, then put two players into the top eight at this Pro Tour, uh, put a player into the finals of this Pro Tour, and uh, you know they just pull away with it. They will be far out ahead of the pack heading into the Pro Tour in Kyoto, and uh, you know they are going to be hard to match. Uh, you know, and you've got a handful of teams chasing them down. Uh, they'll be on their home turf. Uh, they all have the advantage of not having to travel halfway around the world, you know, to get to the Pro Tour. Uh, it's it's going to be spectacular. And, you know, we could very well be seeing our team of the weekend, Team Musashi, when we get to the World Championship in Boston. We certainly could be DM. Great stuff. No doubt Musashi are leading the way and maybe the rest are fighting for second place in Kyoto, but still a lot of points on the line in our final Pro Tour of the season. Arrow Devastation coming your way in Kyoto the week after Kyoto also plays host to a Grand Prix. So it's going to be a good couple of weeks in Japan. But we're closing in on the end of the show. So Ian, as the feature match area deserts behind us, not deserts because that's Armand Kedd, obviously, but anyway, um, Give us a, a takeaway from this PT. Hmm, I'm not sure if I have one especially memorable takeaway from the Pro Tour, but I can tell you about a really fun uh, event or fun match that we watched. Going okay. all the way back to round one, I really, really enjoyed in the limited rounds watching uh, Martin use a draft and then watching round one, I believe, uh, he was able to assemble... Um, What's the Drake? Uh, Enigma, Enigma Drake. Enigma Drake, absolutely, yeah. With power equal the number of instances and sorcerers in your insane. graveyard. Had an 11-4 Enigma Drake. It was able to cast insult to injury and attack Ooh. for 11, 20, like a bajillion probably. Yeah. And that was pretty awesome to watch. Yeah, I think, so he actually won that match. In, his two game wins featured one attack across two games mm -hmm. because of insult to injury, which is like pretty brutal. And Martin Uzer right in the thick of things for Draft Master, of course. Maria, something, something for you from Pro Tour Ramen Kiet. Absolutely. Christian Calcano's making the top eight. His speech, his interview with BDM was so emotional. There wasn't a dry eye up here on the news desk. I know it was just you and me, but that was uh, the case. I mean, true. you really felt the heart he had for the game and just the passion he put in, what was it, 144 GPs yep. that he's attended? Yep. I mean, this guy loves magic, and it was so great to see a people's champion like that finally make it to the top eight. Yeah, fantastic. And the thing is, once you do it once does start to feel easier because you can't help feeling when you've never been there. Am I ever going to fulfill the dream? Well, yes, you are, Chris Calcano, and we'll see you again on Sunday very soon, we have no doubt. But we're closing in on the end of the show. It's been a great weekend here in Nashville. Thanks to the good folks of Tennessee for a great time here at the home of the Predators. In the end, it was Jerry Thompson who was the ultimate Nashville Predator here at Pro Tour Armand Kett. Until we meet again, for everyone here on the Pro Tour, we'll see you again very soon around the world of NTG. I'm Rich Hagen. I'm Maria Bartholdi. Saying brains. brains. <laughs>